Dave, thanks for joining our quarterly webinar. After such a tumultuous year in the markets and economy, I know our viewers will be interested in hearing your thoughts for what's ahead in 2023. Thanks, Joe. I always look forward to sharing my thoughts with our participants and institutional clients. So we should probably start what's on, currently on the mind of investors, and that's inflation. As you know, the Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell and other Fed governors have been very public regarding their resolve to get inflation under control. Investors worry that continued aggressive Fed action will derail economic growth and cause a recession. What stands out most to you in terms of the reflation ports, reports we've seen over the past several months? You're right, Joe. Each month, investors anxiously pour over the inflation numbers and attempt to guess what the Fed's next move might be. We're filming this webinar on Thursday, January 12th, and earlier this morning, the Department of Labor released inflation figures for December. It's fair to say that investors expressed a sigh of relief as the annual rate of inflation continued to ease and was exactly in line with what economists were expecting. This first chart, Joe, shows the path of inflation over the last couple of years. As you know, the 9.1% annual inflation reading back in June was the highest rate of inflation in 40 years. And while we should all be glad that inflation is easing, we still have a ways to go before the rate of inflation reaches a more sustainable level. So let's start with the good news from this morning's inflation report. Energy prices continued to ease with prices down a bit over 6% for the month of December. If we were to look back at the June inflation report, Joe, we would have seen that the increase in energy prices accounted for three percentage points, or one third of that 9% inflation that we saw for the month. Now keep in mind that energy only accounts for 8% of the consumer basket of goods and services used for measuring inflation. In today's report, year-over-year -year energy inflation accounts for a little more than just one-half of a percentage point of December's 6.5% inflation. Additionally, we also saw price declines in used cars and airfares. So it's fair to say, Joe, that the factors that originally drove inflation have certainly eased. But if we look at this next slide, we can see that food and shelter inflation the two categories that together make up well over half of the consumer basket remain stubbornly high, with housing expenses continuing to move higher. Transportation costs, however, continue to decline. So Dave, then how do you think inflation will play out in 2023 and beyond, and what will you be watching for? So the short answer, Joe, is that I think the annual rate of inflation will continue to come down but how far it will fall is anyone's guess. There are a lot of factors at play that will influence inflation over the next couple of years. Candidly, I struggle weighing the influence of these many varied factors. But let's first look at what consumers and the markets think. The chart on the left side of this next slide shows the path of consumer expectations based on a survey conducted by the University of Michigan. Consumers typically overestimate future inflation. Expectations for inflation over the next five years have hovered around 3%, so let's perhaps think we view that as a ceiling. On the right, we see the path of the five-year break-even inflation rate based on the difference in interest yields for a traditional five-year U.S. Treasury note in a five-year Treasury inflation-protected security. This difference represents the market's view on what inflation will be on average over the next five years. Expectations peaked at about 3.5% back in March and declined quite significantly to 2.25% today. The bottom of this slide shows that the market also thinks that inflation will average 2.25% over the next 30 years. We've definitely seen positive signs that inflation will continue to decline into 2023 and beyond. Recall the supply chain issues that disrupted the economy for much of the last two years. Those have been largely resolved. When the supply of goods matches the demand for goods, pricing pressure eases. We've also seen a significant drop in housing activity, largely due to an increase in mortgage interest rates 
resulting from the Fed's aggressive action to address inflation. At the beginning of 2022, the average 30-year mortgage stood at a tad above 3%. Rates peaked at just above 7% back in November, but still hover around 6.5% today. The average price of a home in the U.S. today is about $350,000. So assuming that one were to finance 80% of the cost with a mortgage, a homeowner would be paying about $500 more a month today than they would have just a year ago. A drop in housing activity means fewer purchases one makes when switching houses. Lower demand for renovations, appliances, etc. has disinflationary effects. So while that may not be good for economic growth, it should ease inflationary pressures. We've also heard a lot recently about low personal savings rates and consumers depleting their savings built during the pandemic. In addition, consumers have added to their debt burdens and have increased the use of credit in paying for goods and services. So as we enter 2023, it's reasonable to assume that consumers will have cut back on purchases, which again could have disinflationary effects. So Dave, I want to pause here real quick because what you're describing, a drop in housing and reduced consumer demand, certainly sounds like the beginning of stagnant economic growth or even a recession. A lot of economists think the U.S. has already entered a recession. So is that what you're seeing, Dave? So let's look where the economy stands at the end of 2022, Joe. As you know, the economy contracted in the first half of the year, declining 1.6% 1.6% in the first quarter and 06 in the second quarter. We had a rebound in the third quarter with a growth rate of 3.2%. Now, this next slide displays the Atlanta Federal Reserve's most recent forecast for the fourth quarter, which shows 4.1% growth. If accurate, that would mean that the economy grew at around 2% in 2022, which would make it pretty much an average year in the 21st century. But if you look at the chart on the right, you can see the evolution of 2023 GDP forecasts of economists surveyed by the Wall Street Journal. Not great news. The consensus seems to be that we will have a mild recession this year and then revert to about average growth in 2024. Earlier this week, the World Bank revised its 2023 growth forecast for the world in the U.S. Because of the inflation we experienced around the world last year, it lowered its growth forecast for the world to 1.7% compared to its forecast of just six months ago for 3% growth. It sees the U.S. growing in a meager half percent this year. But it's important that I emphasize, Joe, that this view is widely known by the market. So for those watching that think the 2023 economic forecast will be bad for the markets, I must emphasize that the markets are forward-looking. We should assume that current stock prices reflect an expectation of near zero growth in 2023. If conditions worsen relative to expectations, then markets will likely suffer. If the economy performs better than expected, then stocks should rise absent more interest rate shocks. I do think that the data today seems to support the view that we are in for a couple of rough months to open 2023. This next slide looks at the results of purchasing manager surveys for manufacturing and service companies. Each month, the Institute of Supply Management asks companies if their business is better or worse than the prior month. Activity in both manufacturing and the services sectors have been in precipitous declines. So it's fair to say, Joe, that the business sector is facing a rough patch over the next several months. And as you can see on the next slide, corporate profits are certainly going to suffer. Analysts see a decline in corporate profits for the fourth quarter of 2022 and again in the second quarter of this year with just a very modest increase for the first quarter. 
They don't see decent profit growth again until the second half of this year. But again, Joe, remember, the market knows this, and stock prices reflect this information. The extent to which expectations change is what will influence future stock price movements. So Dave, then what could potentially have a positive influence on economic activity in 2023? What will you be looking for there? Certainly, as we've talked about, the key issue in the U.S. is going to be the path of inflation and the extent to which the Federal Reserve is satisfied that its inflation is under control. But there are a couple of international wild cards at play that I do believe could positively influence the U.S. economy. The first, of course, is the war in Ukraine. The war has negatively affected Europe, notably due to higher energy prices. Europe is currently experiencing a mild winter and energy prices have come down a lot, so that's a positive. But until we see an end of the war, Europe is likely facing stagnant economic growth. An end of the war would certainly improve economic conditions in Europe. But I think an even bigger wild card is the economic implication of China's 180 on its COVID restrictions. China effectively lifted all restrictions and fully opened its economy on January 8th. While the Chinese are in for a rough few months as COVID continues to spread rapidly across the country, we could see a massive resurgence in demand for goods and services by Chinese consumers later in the year, similar to what we saw in the U.S when we lifted restrictions in 2021. That would likely have positive knock-on effects for the U.S. economy, though in fairness, it could also contribute to increasing near-term inflationary pressures. Thanks, Dave. I agree the economy could be in for a rough patch for the next couple of months. It'll be certainly interesting to see what transpires over the quarter. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with our viewers? Yeah, thanks, Joe. Um, there's one more topic I'd like to discuss, and that's the performance of the seven mega cap tech companies in 2022. My last slide shows the extent of the carnage impacting these companies in 2022. I've listed here the seven largest companies in terms of market value at the end of 2021 and the losses in market value experienced by each. Our viewers will recognize most of the names in the list. Alphabet is the parent of Google. Meta is the corporate name for Facebook. NVIDIA is a diversified technology company with a heavy emphasis on artificial intelligence. As our viewers can see on the slide, all these companies saw precipitous declines in their stock prices in 2022. While the rankings of the top four did not change, Tesla, Meta, and NVIDIA all dropped out of the top 10. The combined loss in market value for these seven companies was nearly $5 trillion. Now to put that in perspective, $5 trillion exceeds the market value of the entire German and Japanese stock markets combined. It also exceeds the market value of the entire U.S. energy and retail sectors combined. The losses are just staggering. I agree, Dave, that $5 trillion is just a huge number. So we know that Westpath has intentionally underweighted these mega cap names. Is now the time to jump back in? I don't think so, Joe. Even though these companies saw big losses in 2022, the stocks still aren't cheap. Technology continues to evolve rapidly, and I cannot confidently predict that these same companies will be leading the way 10, 20, 30 years from now. So Joe, you posted a great graphic earlier this week on our internal teams channel that showed the largest stocks at the beginning of each decade over the last 100 years. Some notable, or should I say forgettable names that appeared on the list were Sears, Kodak, Lucent, and Time Warner. And we don't see those anywhere near the top 10 anymore. I think that our stakeholders will be better served by investing in the up and comers those companies with new and exciting technologies that offer great opportunities for meaningful price appreciation. Thanks for the update, Dave. Always great speaking with you.